TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. Right behind me, this is the warning screen. Please be advised. Read this, man. Just in case. Uh, don't forget, we do got Patreon and we do got merch. The link to that is down in the description. If you want to catch a live, go to twitch.com. That's the username located on the bottom of the screen, man. This is Police Interceptors. It's so hard for me to find the police interceptors nowadays, man. But anyways, here it is. Talk to me. Copyright, copyright disclaimer, disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. Being an interceptor is not for the faint-hearted. Oh, please, put that down! What are you doing? Make no mistake, this is a dangerous gig. We don't come to the door with that. If the worst does happen, we're confronted by someone with a, a weapon, a knife or a firearm. Generally, they fall into a category that we call EMD, which is emotionally or mentally distressed, which means that their decision-making, their ability to function and just do normal things, like normal members of society... What year is this from? ...by something, be that a mental illness or a, an alcohol problem or drug problem or a heightened uh, mental state, and you throw that in, or, or drugs, and you throw that into the mix, and it just makes... A dangerous situation, even more dangerous. It's the wee hours of Thursday. While night shifts are coming to an end for interceptors across the region, a news agent prepares for a new day. But this day will be like no other. A masked figure enters the shop and approaches the counter. With a knife against her throat, the news agent struggles, but she's manhandled into the office and behind the counter. At knife point, the news agent hands over cash, Obviously. and the masked thief flees. Just as a member of the public approaches the counter, the man is an off duty police sergeant and he's straight out after the armed robber. Two miles away, interceptor Liam Sewell gets the call. What year is this from? This is a good little episode. They got live footage, CCTV. Grabbed a woman in the, in the shop by the throat, forced to open the till and forced to open the safe mm -hmm. at the post office. All in all, made up for about 250 quid. Liam knows the off-duty cop will be unarmed, but he's carrying a taser pepper spray and 80 pounds of German Shepherd muscle, Titan. It's fair to say the cavalry's coming. Yeah, we're nearly there now anyway. And they're not hanging around. Yo, know, imagine going into somewhere and trying to rob the store and getting confronted by an off-duty police cop. He instantly made a phone call to somebody who was on duty and you was booked right then and there. And a dog. The off-duty sergeant has cornered the armed robber in an alley. The suspect may have a knife and the sergeant is unarmed. Put your hands up now. Put your hands up. Liam and Titan arrive on scene and make the arrest. Hey, you're under arrest for robbery. Hey. You do not see anything but me on the defense of entry questions. Late, Terrible man. look. The suspect's face is uncovered. <laughs> and it's a woman. Will you grab hold of her, mate? Yeah. Just to the dog. But there's no sign of... She's clearly on class A's too. What? What was her...
She down bad. Will you grab hold of her, mate? Yeah. So secure the dog. Well, she definitely was robbing for, for a crack. Ain't no way she was out here just robbing that food. For food. She was trying to support her habits. Liam has just been... You know. The female suspect seems disturbed and denies carrying a weapon. You said he had a knife, and he didn't have a knife. She could have thrown it. Look out of that one, but he didn't have one. Somewhere, somewhere between getting on the wood, I think it's on this little stretch here, she's dropped it. Yeah. If there's a knife nearby, it's vital evidence. Yeah. It looks like she's dropped it as opposed to... Floor. I haven't. Under the circumstances, any sudden moves from the suspect are cause for concern. Secure the dog. Come back, it's going to lie. Get your hands behind your back. Will you get your hands off me? Hey. Hey, listen. Take your hands. I'll get caught. You're going to get bit. It's not a court. With reinforcements arriving and the suspect in handcuffs, they can sweep the area for a knife. The dog. He ain't even trying to bite. You take it off. She's, she's dropped the knife somewhere. She's got a lot of money in her hand there. No knife. But a fistful of cash. That was a stick. Mm. Where did you put the stick then? I threw the stick on the grass. Like how long ago though? Now she claims she was only carrying a stick. Over there. Where is the stick? Or over there. While well, the search for a she weapon. Still don't continues. gotta let go of the money? Managed to find it again. The suspect is loaded into the van. But she's refusing to part with the cash in her hand. <laughs> Maybe I just drop that money straight in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Nice man, you know you're not taking the money off me. You do it last time we went under your money. Nice. You're not taking the money. You're not taking the money. Count me before you take it. It's just going straight in the bag. I want to count me before you take it. Literally, just go straight in the bag. No, I want to count me because last time you sure changed me, no. She says the money is hers and she's worried about the police stealing some of it while she's in custody. Too many You don't want to rip any of it. Well, count me before you put it in. There we go. Crack is a hell of a drug, man. This is crazy. She's that delusional where they don't like that ain't yours, man. Well, I'm in the bag and get sealed, all right? What's your head? Finally, it's prized from her grip and she's safely locked away. Oh, don't it. This. But there's still no sign of a knife. Any chance she said it was a stick? As you chased her across the grass, she's thrown a stick, that's what she said. A good thing for her it was a stick. That's a lesser sentence. He's admitting it was a knife. She was waving on like. I love CCTV. It's hard to tell from the CCTV footage whether it is a blade that the robber holds to the cashier's throat. But the have a go sergeant who gave chase believes he saw the suspect with a knife. When we, she's dumped some clothing on the top of Clive. I don't know where Clive Street is, but the sergeant said she's been stripping off on the top of Clive seat and he said she definitely had it in her hand. It's a needle in a haystack job in the dark, not really. pouring rain and over a wide area. Salute for making us think that they not try hards and they're not going to like possibly not find it, but if there's a knife to be found, these cops will be finding it. He's followed her all the way up here. He's probably followed the best part of a mile while she's been waving a knife around yeah. him, trying to keep him back. Um, we've come her along, she's just surrendered. She's admitted the crime. Yeah, so what she said is, um, she said it's a first robbery. Um, but um, I like to say, we've told her she's not very good at it. She's been caught, caught in a first attempt. But though she's coughed up to the robbery, she denies carrying a knife. No, she, yeah, she came along that one. Yeah. And up there. And he, he's saying the only, place he, the only place he's lost sight of it with the knife, or whatever, was when, she went, when he went around that corner. Which we might put it at that big stick. The search looks fruitless. I'm trying to get the CCTV now. Sir. But then. Here it is. Sarge. Got the knife. Is it a but real knife or a butter knife? Bingo. Ah, so yeah, this is knife. a knife she's had. Yes, yeah, so we've got the knife here. It looks like a butter knife, though. We'll take this down in there. Yeah, it's a good result, really. Let's get a good few, yeah, for this one. Definitely. Red -handed robbery, you know, the knife. Mm -hmm. and the cash. Money in the hand. Literally no better result. The woman with a fistful of cash was found guilty of armed robbery and was committed to hospital in order to protect herself and the public. For Liam, the whole thing's been a bit too close to home.
I drive that route just every after every night shift. I pass it about five in the morning, and uh, them hardworking people are out in that shop, you know, loading it up, papers are getting delivered. And then you've got someone like that just going in, thinking that she can uh, rob the place. All interceptors hope for an eventful shift. No change, no change, overtaking vehicles. Some pass at 100 miles an hour. I am in pursuit. Others are more pedestrian. <laughs> <laughs> I think I prefer night shifts when there's no traffic on the road and you can you can be more proactive and have a moot round, look for your, your naughty burglars and your thieves, whereas day shift you tend to be stuck in traffic like we are now bagging baddies is all about timing being a criminal is quite a good job really because they don't get out of bed on a the morning they sleep until lunchtime it's an ideal job but most of the world's got scruples and morals so they don't do that they actually go out and work for a living day shifts are fine for traffic jams and paperwork night times where the action is all right, I'm right. 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 not bothered. Yeah. Come on, right. Right. Are you threatening? No, go on, go on. Are you well, threatening? Give me your keys while I check it out. Go on, check it out. An hour into his night shift, and a routing stop for Lee Wilson has already turned nasty. Who are you threatening? Yeah, so you know where Mum lives. Who are you threatening? Right. You know, you know, think of... An aggressive driver has brought up Lee's family. All right, well, how would you do that? Stop your threats now, lads. Yeah. We'll lock it up. All right, that's your first and last warning. Do you right. understand? All right. If anything happens to my parents' address, all right, you're going to be the prime suspect now. It's threatening to be one of those nights. I'm telling you what, my mother's tougher than me. We do not get paid enough. Um, nah, nobody. See, that's why I give a man kudos to a lot of officers because a lot of things be said to them that's out of pocket. And I would have instantly choke slammed dude through the roof of his car. Me personally, <laughs> to take okay, do any it. sort of um, violence, any sort of abuse um, when you're with your family off duty. Personal threats are always disturbing, but there's no time to dwell on that now. Lee spotted a speeding Mercedes. This white Mercedes thinks they're, uh, they're entitled to drive in excess of the speed limit for the area. Lee's dreamed of being a cop since he was eight, back when Bodie and Doyle were throwing their Ford Capri around in the professionals. LZLZ from Tangle 420, Quebec, over. Alongside Lee is rookie Rachel Thompson. She stays put while he heads that? out to discuss the driver's this, speed. This, yeah, received. Yeah, see, this is how I noticed the older episode. She a rookie, she don't got no yellow vest on. He's away. Vehicles failed to stop. Vehicles failed to stop. Toe down, maximum warp. Vehicle failed to stop. Right, right, right. Homerton Road, advanced driver. T pack trade and an unmarked vehicle. Left, left, left. Charbury Road. The Merc is an E class sport. With a 0 to 60 of seven and a half seconds and a top end of nearly 150. Yeah, it's uh, right, right, right towards Morrison's. With its head start, the car's vanished. First police chasing you. They got away on you, Rachel? Stand by. But Lee's a pursuit specialist in a Skoda VRS. Skoda jokes are old news. This is also a 150 mile per hour car. As Lee races to catch up, he <laughs> spots the Merc. It's gone through the estate. It's doubled back. It's temporary held. Temp Why would they double back? That was dumb. Temporary held. It's a left, left, left. On to Ormsby Road. Speed, 6 0. Can have all 30 pack tactics. Now it's a race to catch the performance car. Yeah, it's the Lawnsby Road towards a roundabout. Who's already away? You double back. You should have. 
Criminals be dumb, man. They be having too much pride. They be having too much bravado, like, dude. <laughs> the um, Sandringham, speed, 5-0. It's 4 up. two females in the back, a white male driver, slowing for the roundabout. On the roundabout, speed, 2-0. Looks like the driver's getting cold feet. Pulling into the way. Uh, into uh, a bus stop, stand by. We've been here before. Confirmed vehicle stopping. Yes, yes. But this time, he's going nowhere. Get out. Get out. Get out. Now, get over. The driver's in cuffs, and one of his three passengers is in hysterics. Oh, my God, I hate having that girl with me. I gotta get off him, shorty. She just took the whole. He took the whole unit on a high speed. What do you mean? To, like, just chill. Let me just chill. Please, please, get off my way, friend. Why, why did he? Why did he stop? Because I needed to go to the hospital. I'm losing my belly. Is it absolutely? You want to go to hospital? Right, you're under arrest for dangerous driving. Fail to stop for the police. Excuse? All right, suspicion of theft of motor vehicle this moment in time. Really, really, really. Rachel fun, deals man. with the stressed out girl. I've just literally just got out of the hospital from Whiplash. Um, Reinforcements handle the other two passengers, one of whom is pregnant, and Lee takes the driver. That's what they should have said. My friend is pregnant. We're trying to get her to the hospital. Something's wrong. Would have went to the hospital for no reason. It's free out there, ain't it? It was the one that just failed to stop. Yeah, I know. Being driving I'm dangerously. Right, I require you to provide me with a specimen of breath by means of an approved device. Yeah, I can smell alcohol on you. Yeah, I've just had a pint. All right. He admits to a pint. Take a big deep breath and blow until I tell you to stop. Keep going, keep going, keep going, stop. While Lee waits for the breathalyzer, the stressed out girl protests the innocence of the male passenger. And reiterates her need for medical attention. As officers arrange transport to hospital, Lee has some good news. You've passed a roadside breath test, all right. And some bad news. I suspect that you're in the influence of drugs. All right, your pupils, your pupils, you your, test me, test me your pupils are dilated. No, all right, they're out. huge. Me, all right, now listen, me. listen. All right, okay. so you're under arrest on suspicion of uh, drug driving. No, they have an eight-minute test right there that, that you can test you. Now, since I failed that test, since I passed this test, now I'm this. Now I'm now I'm high. Come on now. All right, in section four of the road traffic act. Right, you don't have to say anything. Next job is to give him a blood test to check for drugs. You're going to be taken down the neck, and you're going to be taken through a process. All right. The hysterical girl is going to hospital. No, human. How many times did we shout and scream at you? Meanwhile, interceptor Jimmy Greaves arrives with police dog Gunner to search the Merc. Gunner can sniff out cash. Firearms and drugs. I predict that there may be some drugs involved, so we're just gonna put a gunner in and let them have a have a sniff around, see if there's anything there. If there's anything here, we'll pick it up and indicate. Oh, just like this. Gunner's found something. Good boy. Ah. And earned a tennis ball. Good boy. So that uh, sort of freezing indication is exactly what he's what, what he's doing found? there tells me that there's potentially something inside there no it's Such a, a center console so sometimes people keep cash in there we'll have a little look and see see what's inside well it's probably a little bit of moolah you hear me while jimmy searches lee escorts the driver to the van it's with that with that hold on sorry about it, mate i know i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry I'm sorry Go in there. Not as sorry as you're going to be. Just have a look in the cab. Because Gunner has had a result. Class Dogs is. indicated on the uh, on the vehicle, and just in the centre console here is a, a bud of cannabis, probably a tenner's worth. So he's been arrested on suspicion of drug driving at this moment in time, and uh, 
that's probably, a, you know, what he's had tonight. He's saying he's had no drugs, but we'll take him down and we'll go through the process with him. It's a nice car with all mod cons. Pint glass. I'll ask uh, who was it, who's this cannabis is. I'll ask one of them lads there. Uh, the passenger's just produced a bag of white powder out of his pocket as well. Has he? Yep. Unlucky. There you go. There's another lock up. Yeah, they might as well get a get a little cannabis to the passenger too. You already going down. You might as well take that with you, buddy. The owner of the cannabis is currently unknown. But they've now found two bags of white powder on the male passenger. Luckily, it's a big van. So the other girl, she's she's pregnant, isn't she? Given the situation, Lee thinks it's wise for the pregnant woman to follow her friend to hospital. Definitely. Go on ahead before you go into labour, ma'am. And at least you've covered it, haven't you? The fair release, you say everything's all in order and baby's all right. You've done your bit, haven't you? All right, hope everything's OK. I won't tolerate people driving like that. And, you know, her parents, if they find out that she's been in this vehicle and he's driven like that, um, I'm sure they'll have a few things to say to him, and rightly so. A car chase, threats to family, coke, weed and a pregnancy, it's been one hell of a shift. Tommy. And it's not over yet. It's the same night? Rachel is <laughs> having the best first ride along, ain't she? Like is a, a police officer's asking for some more units and they're coming from quite a distance away, so it'd be wrong of me not to turn up and see if I can assist until they arrive. Two officers have called for assistance with a violent man. And things have just escalated big time. We've got the, the police officers pressed his emergency button now. Every copper has an emergency button on their radio. When they hit it, all available officers drop what they're doing and race to assist. It's a last resort for desperate circumstances. How dare they? Are you, are you threatening? No, go on, go on. Are you threatening? Go on there, Give me your keys while I check it out. Lee Wilson and rookie Rachel Thompson are knee deep. We we did just just to dress. Get out. Button pressed by coppers struggling. Lee isn't sparing the Skoda's 227 horses. Using all his driving skills, he races to the address. To find officers on scene and the violent man already hit with pepper spray. Yeah, He's see, on. this has to be old. Pepper spray? Yeah, I wasn't using pepper spray. That's pava. That's pava. Right, I've got yeah. it. Yeah. Which I've lingers got... in the air. You want yeah, right? Just double lock in. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> you get that out. <coughs> you got a <coughs> <Yeah. coughs> Okay. Guys, you've been. He's down, but not out. We've got him. We've got him. Come on. Let's go get some air. We'll stay with him. Relax. Politely! <coughs> <coughs> Shut up. He's been spitting at the cops. Put him in the mask. <laughs> spitting blood. It takes six officers to wrestle the violent man out of the house. <laughs> and he's not coming quietly. <laughs> Yeah, buddy, gotta be drunk. He gotta be drunk. He's either drunk or just high. Either or, we're not surprised. Richie and Johnny, all right. Finally, he's locked away, which is the safest thing for him and everyone else. Obviously, really violent, nasty individual, threatening to bite, threatening to spit at us. He was trying to spit, threatening he's going to bite our faces off. He's got leg straps on, he's got cuffs to the back, and he still managed to kick off in the back of the van. I think he is Hannibal Lecter. You imagine turning up to a house on your own with an individual like that. You know, it's nasty, nasty, and it's frightening. 
Mercifully for the two officers who first attended, when the man got violent, the red button did its job. The noise that it makes is a clear indication to everybody who was listening to the radios when they hear that noise to know that there's an officer in trouble and everybody turns out. It's quite scary, actually. Didn't really notice it. Was like, I think it's like spitting blood. It's, it's quite, yeah, not, not... Are you shaking up, Rachel? Get a new job, then. If this is not for you, go home now. I hear a lot of quivering in your voice, and it is not that serious. You've got 27 cops with you, and you quivering. Not very nice to see, but luckily he's in the van now, so... Tonight's been a baptism of fire for rookie Rachel. It's certainly an eye-opener for you because that's something that, in reality, is something that you've got to be faced with. But, you know, you could you could have any... I'd be surprised if I see Rachel still on the force after tonight. She doesn't look like she want to be there. Any size police officer turn up to an incident like that, um, you know, that would be police officers like six foot two and, you know, gyms it every single day. It's, um, it's, it's frightening. It may have taken six coppers to restrain him, but it took one court to convict him. Rachel grabbing that man ankle. The violent man pleaded guilty to assaulting two police officers. He was ordered to pay £305 in fines and costs. As for the runaway Merc driver, no court he was charged with dangerous driving and also drug driving after a blood test discovered cocaine in his system. The male passenger was cautioned for possession of cocaine. No action was taken over the aggressive man. So nobody got no jail time. Salute. And in the Range Rover, pulled over at the start of the evening. All in all, it was a monster night shift. And Lee's earned an early morning treat. I hate him. I really do hate donuts. But you banging it, bro. Oh my God. Go back. I hate him. I really do hate donuts. This is so stereotypical. This is like me eating a piece of chicken. This is crazy. It's early evening. And Spike's on duty in the unmarked car he calls Black Beauty. We've just had a report of two cars in Peter Lee, which is uh, the, the main town nearest to where we are, um, performing donuts on the main road. Uh, someone's obviously heard this and they've got some cause for concern. Spike's an advanced driver. He can handle a fast car, but he's seen too many drivers lose it doing dumb tricks like donuts. We need to get there uh, and, and prevent any kind of crash from happening or work. <laughs> His bro's bro got a dog name. Doing dumb. All right. The suspect vehicles, two silver cars, were spotted five miles away. One of the added bonuses of us being in Black Beauty tonight. Um, it's got all the same equipment of a normal traffic car, but once we get close to where a scene like this is happening, we'll just revert back to being covert. As he approaches the area where the silver cars were spotted, Spike kills the siren. I don't want people to actually hear us coming, but clearly I need to be able to move people out the way safely, so that's what we're doing at the minute. Finally, it's off with the blues and into full stealth mode. This is the road where it was uh, reported to be happening, um, so we're just having a look now, um, see if someone is still lurking by. Um, if they're not, it's then where could they have moved on to. There's no sign of silver cars doing donuts, but something else sets off Spike's spider sense. Two youngsters parked up. We're gonna have a chat. That's ageism. Two young people in a car, you automatically stop them. That's ageism, ain't it? I'm following a police report. <laughs> hey, mate, you alright? Yeah. What's up, mate? Just stop by you for now. Well, I'm, I don't know. That's alright then. Hey, yeah, mate, okay. is this your motor? Yeah, no, it's my sister's, mate. Alright. Oh, Are you allowed to drive us? Pardon? Are you allowed to drive us? Shut here, mate. 
We're waiting for him. Just waiting. Apparently, the guy's sister is due any minute to legally drive them away, which raises a question. Who's just driven it here? My sister. Because the back wheels of the car are really warm. Oh, brother. Yeah, it's only just been driven yeah. now. Bro, was doing donuts in this? Ow. He was doing donuts in a toaster? Like, what is... Oh, yeah. It's to the point where the actual discs are that hot. Their story holds water like an old sieve. And Spike's about to poke another hole in the absent sister defence. Let me just have a look at you, mate. Because if there'd been somebody else in this, there's actually not room for you guys to be in the back. What do you mean? There's nowhere for you to have been sitting in the back. My oh, sister's right. gone down, mate, to get some tweet. I've just sold, sold a dog to some lads. Have you? Yeah, mate, I'll show you pictures. I'll show you, mate. Sold the plot dog. thickens. The back seat apparently contained a dog, which they've just sold. Oh, that's the worst sold story I ever heard. Right? I'm not lying to you, mate. So there's been a dog in the back, has there? Yes. Look, I'm parked up, back of a white pickup. Are you, yeah. Are you fine? No problem, mate. See you soon. Right up. We'll wait for your sister to come back and to make sure with her name. This could be a long wait. Your sister's gone where? Got something to eat. I've just been sold a dog. No, look, that's not good. Shot, a dog. Please. Is it? Yep. As luck would have it, that may be the dog they've just sold. Come here, sir. Do the corny way. Hi, lad. You all right? Have you just bought this dog? Uh, Who off? Just trying to find them. Who else was with them? Just them. Just the two of them? No. Anyone else? No. Right on. Cheers, mate. The shaggy dog story rings true, but Rover's new owners saw no sign of the sister who supposedly drove the car here. Damn, they could have held it down and been like, yeah, I think it was another girl with him. Mm. Well, how would they know to say girl, though? He could have just said, I don't know. I came out 10 minutes after. Your story checks out. They've just bought the dog off you. Um, the drama being they said there was only ever used to, were you? I don't. Yeah, because we've come and they come after us. Oh, right. right. Time for another little poke at the sister defence. Can you ring your sister, then? She ain't got a phone on her. <laughs> I thought you wanted to ring her earlier. No, I said I'm waiting for her. Right. The situation is simple. Producer sister or the car's getting seized. Just, the, the drama is there's only your sister and she would to drive this. Yep. You know, that's, that's where my interest is right now, to kind of get yeah. to the bottom of it. Yeah. Um, if, if you've driven up here without insurance, it's not the end of the world, but I'll wait here until your sister arrives. Okay, mate, you'll have to wait here, man. Equally. I can have the NPR cameras looked at that'll cover the journey from you in this car from wherever you have come at. The ones where you are right now are incredible. High definition. Um, if that's only going to show your sister driving, then happy days, you've got nothing to worry yeah, about. Yeah. No, but, no, but now's the time to tell me if it was something different to that. Look, mate, my sister was driving. I'm like, oh, we've only sat in a car waiting for it. It's not no crime, is it? No. Yeah. I know. We'll just wait then to make sure. Okay. Hello? I'm sat here doing now, and the phone took care of me saying we're going to wait for our to come back. Are you, have you got rights to take care of me? You've got cars not over. Yeah, to prevent you from driving us. Yeah, but I'm not driving, I'm going to go for some toy on me and my sister. It's a standoff in Peter Lee. Right now, there's a, there's a suspicion that you two have taken this without your sister's consent. That's what my suspicion is. The guy is sticking to his story. She had a good boy to protect and fetch the dog. Unfortunately, his mate isn't. Right, is that the crack? That's the crack. That, that's the crack. Bro, be What's quiet. That, then? Game over. Mate, I've drove it through. You got any insurance? No. Believe it or not, this isn't day one for me being a Bobby. You know, been doing this for a long time. I knew that ten minutes ago. His friend wasn't quite as tuned into the story as what he was, you know, and... But I was just playing along with the story and I was going to wait for the sister to turn up. Would have been a long wait, wouldn't it? You know, she wasn't just round the corner getting a bag of chips.
The dog selling driver attended court, but the case was discontinued. I would never be dude's friend no more. As the courts decided there wasn't sufficient evidence. Still, all too much. When it comes to facing villains or rowdy crowds, the interceptors have a secret weapon. It's loaded with teeth and not to be messed with. It's nine at night, and Mo Rashad <coughs> is on duty in Middlesbrough with police dog Max. Well, who are all of these new people? Control from 45. I'm offended. The first record Mo bought was Smooth Criminal. None of those out tonight. Mo's hunting a cut price burglar who's robbed a shed. It looked like he listened to you been nicked by, you been nicked by, smooth criminal. Listen to that, boy. It's classic, though. I want to see what the crap is. But it's just been flagged down by a worried local. Uh, the kids, uh, the, uh, the burning, uh, I don't know what is inside. It's lots of kids wait, wait, inside which, the plane. Wait, which park? Sorry? What, what, who, what's happening? Oh, fire in the park. Yeah, the fire, the kids at the play and burn the fire. The man leads Mo into the park. Is it a building? Is it a building? No, not building. The interceptor breaks into a run. And this is why. Guy Fawkes tonight was nine weeks ago. But someone started not one. Stay where you are. I'm trying to set the park on Stay where you are. But no. two fires. Stay where you are. I'm telling you now. Here. Here. Moe's grabbed a lad who he saw playing with a flaming wheelie bin. You're going to jail for arson, buddy. Yeah. What, were you, what were you doing with that then? He was trying to pull it out. He was trying to put it out on us. Some kids came over earlier on. And then obviously he was trying to put it out. I've just came there. No mums. Not me. The lads deny setting the fire and they're becoming rowdy. Yeah! I'm buzzing, mum's like buzzing. Moe cuts them some slack. Right. Don't. Did you just say, did you say pig there? But they're really playing with fire now. You know what? We make it easy. I won't get the, the dog out for you. Give us two minutes. Mo. God, Mo, you look like one of those cops that don't know what they're doing right now. You are overwhelmed. <laughs> they're taking a the piss on you right there. <laughs> the prospect of a snarling dog does the trick. But in the time it takes to melt a wheelie bin, they're back. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep it real. When Mo returns, <laughs> North East 17 won't stay another minute. A few blasts with the extinguisher, and it's back on the road. What? Okay. Mo's kind of a cool cop. Look One man and his dog are worth 10 coppers. And in the early hours, Mo and Max have another chance to prove that. We're going to somebody brought it written into a phone box, which is uh, not too far away from here, actually. Highfield Hotel, um, directly outside there. Mo gets his size nine down. A white male wearing a red tracksuit top. And arrives to spot a man on his knees in the phone box. Place for the dog! Stay there! Stay there! Stay there! Reports are that he has tools, so Moe's taking no chances. On the floor. Hey. Hey. Do not move. Do not move. Jimmy, what have you got in there? Get on the floor now! I'm on the floor. Put your, hand, oh. put your hands on the floor. Put your hands on the floor now! I can see something in there. I'm telling you, get your hands on the floor. Do not move. I'm on the phone. Stay there. Stay there. What do you think I am? Hey. Apparently, he was making a phone call. I ain't gonna lie, Mo got a big dog. <laughs> Don't you play with Mo? On his knees. Jesus Christ, I've just gone in. I'm for me. Girlfriend. All right, Frank Gallagher. Relax. Five. Thank you. There are tools in the phone box, and Mo's worried the guy may have something he could use as a weapon. Right. Yes, please. Right, right. Put your hands on the floor. I'm no, telling no, you now. Got... I don't want you to take nothing no, else out of no, your pockets. No, 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 I can no, see no, tools no, in there. No, 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 
the guy's waving his mobile around, which raises the question of why he needed a phone box. It's warm. Really from it. He's, uh, there's tools in there. Reinforcements have arrived. Put your hands around your back, mate. Put your hands on your head. 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 Oh, right, I'm not... I'm not doing this, you know. Good lad. Good lad. Right, I'm going to give you two seconds, right? I'm not an idiot, right? Right, I'm not an idiot, right? Do what I said, just do what I said. No, shut up, right? I'm not an idiot, right? I'm not new to this, right? I'm not an idiot, right? Right. You've got tools. You sound like an idiot, though. I mean, looks like an idiot, sounds like an idiot, walks like an idiot, barks like an idiot, but, you know. In there, for all I'm all... Who hasn't called a loved one on their knees from a phone box at 2 a.m.? Tools in there. For all I know, you might have a knife in your pocket. What? Up on these feet. Oh. Max has done his job. Good job, Isn't Max. That? Good lad. Get up. Get in. And the late night caller can ring his girlfriend from Borough Nick. <laughs> After all, it's good to talk. There's tool marks and imprints where the uh, money box would be on this. Uh, for the telephone box, uh, there's uh, blades on the floor, there's a, there's a pliers um, and a screwdriver. Right. Mo's late night caller was charged with attempted theft and being racist towards a police officer. Really? In the meantime, after a cold night on his knees, the suspect could probably do with a hot drink. What did he? He's obviously bought with him his uh, hot cup of tea because obviously it's a cold night just to uh, get him by for a while. <laughs> system whilst he's uh, trying to get in so we all need a hot drink but um it's probably gonna get cold now by the time he's out of uh, custody what do you say racist still to come stockton it's thursday evening and a van driver is giving a master class in erratic driving unfortunately he's doing it right in front of chris green come out of a junction on the side road and put his foot down probably to about 15 or 30. And he's just undercut about four cars down there. He was in the wrong lane twice in the roundabout. Man, Man mountain mountain dog. Chris has been on the force for 17 years. The dog handler is no traffic cop, but when in Rome... So we just need to have a bit of a chat with him, see what the crack is with him. And his disabled van. He's guilty. Whatever he did, whatever, he's hiding something. Anytime somebody get out the car before you ask them to, they hide some. One hundred percent. It's a crack, mate. Huh? Yeah, Sorry. What's the rush? There's no rush. Well, why have you done nothing? Well, just you obviously pulled out the right. side road there and floored it up to Little. And the second you've got a chance that uh, two no, two way, you've undercut four. You've here. undercut four cars. I was doing forty miles an hour there. You've undercut four cars onto the roundabout in the wrong lane and then cut back ahead of them. We've done 40 there, mate. I don't care what your speed were, mate. It was a manner of driving. It was, it was no accident, though, was it? Huh? It was no accident. Luckily, there wasn't, no. The, 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 the wouldn't That's irrelevant, mate. Van Man's not exactly a model of repentance. Yeah, my boy, you're not helping your case. I, I came round it on this lane, which was coming up here. After undercutting four cars. I you're missing under, the point. I didn't undercut four cars. Mate, there's a camera in the front there. You were in the inside lane. Down from the roundabout. No, no that's the overtaking lane. If you, overtaking if, lane? Yeah, yeah, if you, if you, come, if you think about it, the right-hand lane is the overtaking lane. That, you're right, it is, yeah. You're yours on the left. So, no, you said... Is there a highway code in the house? Listen, Whose van is it? My mum's. The keys in the vehicle? No. What do you want them for? Just to secure them for the time being. Wait, I'm not going nowhere. I've pulled over here. Sit in the car first, Bob. That side. I'm, I'm OK, so do you, thank you. <coughs> I, I feel claustrophobic when I'm in the vehicle. We'll stand on the roadside, then. On the uh, path. Van Man says he gets claustrophobic in vehicles. Maybe that explains his driving. Admin from Tango 44. I wasn't undertaken. How was I undertaken? You, weren't, you was doing a lot. Please, please, could you explain? Yes, please. Sorry? Please, could you explain? How I've explained I was once. Twice, actually. You can take I'll tell you what, I'll time. explain to you now, because you've, you've had one Section 59 warning for that in February this year, which runs to February next year, right? Police issue Section 59 warnings for antisocial driving. Two in one year, and they'll seize your car. I intend to give you a second one for that. And I'll explain to you why. Deep breath, third time lucky. You've gone from the lane two into lane one, undercut about four cars, cut back inside before the roundabout, 
you've been in the right hand lane, you've cut back across in front of some other car onto this roundabout. That's other than that, your driving was perfect. I know you're insured on that, but it ain't going to stop me seizing the car because it's the second time in a year. Well, yeah, I know. Oh, yeah, on, this, on, on the flip side, is that my fault or is it your fault? Give him a clue. You're in your mum's car and you've driven like that. That ain't my fault, is it? Van Man seems to have accepted his fate. You probably I'm walking from here. But he then changes his tune and threatens to grass Chris up. Oh, mum, you stole the car. <laughs> I didn't tell you you drove like a prat. You stole the car, mate. Yeah. He deserves to lose the car. It was only seven or eight months ago you got the same kind of ticket for it. So, Dummy. here we are in October and the car's gone. But the driver hasn't. So really, you're stealing the car, aren't you? You're no. A, you're a pinch in the car, you're that? No, I'm using the police reform act to seize it. You're, you're stealing the car? In my eyes. That's fine. That's theft, aren't you? There's you're, many other eyes than yours, mate. You're an officer. I am. Are you under your oath today? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, buddy's just talking now. Off of office, so yeah. you're now collecting revenue. You said, yeah, there, so this man's committing fraud. Fraud? Fraud, yeah. Was you, you, you told me you're under your oath, so you're out collecting revenue, so you're taking my mum's car for revenue. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And you're under yeah, the world, yeah, mate. No, you're under the world. The driver's adamant he's witnessing a crime. So naturally, he decides to call the police. I'm getting on the phone. Okay, don't mate, you enjoy. Take the police can I help? I don't know. Um, one of your officers just took my car off me. So he's like pinching my car, stealing my car from me, and it's a disability car. Why? What, what do you mean, disability yeah. car? Right, one of your officers is stealing my car. He said I was driving erratically, right? I came down the arm road. Um, While Van Man brings the control room up to. Well, oh, that's never worked ever in history. Speed, Chris waits calmly for the recovery truck. He's persistent, and he thinks he's going to get the key back, which he's not. Listen. I'm not getting into an argument. I take 999 calls as well and taking non-emergency calls and there's currently one 999 call queuing. So walk up right. to the officer and go and speak to him, OK? I'm done with talking to him, you know what I mean? He's been explaining to what's happening about three or four times. Refused to sign the paperwork. I've left that in the car for his mother, so she's aware of what it is, the details of the offence. So as far as I'm concerned, case closed. I'm not going to bother speaking to him anymore. It's a bit of a waste of time. Just give him... Uh... There we are, he's recovering anyway. It's a valiant effort. I think it's finally given up, though. But it's now time to call a taxi. The only person I feel sorry for is mother, who unfortunately needs a vehicle and won't have it in the morning. But again, that's his problem. El son. El son. Tell leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. That's the El son.